Yeah, so three, when three mutually perpendicular flat datum features are used, um, so you reference these three datum features if features are flat and a three-plane datum reference system is desired um, to constrain all six degrees of freedom. Note that the three planes are infinite in size, but not limited by size of the datum features or simulation or the simulators. And the coordinated coordinate system origin for the tolerances reference all three datums at the intersection of these datum planes. Um, so we can also use material boundary modifiers. Um, and what does this mean? Okay, so we talked about that MMC symbol is M inside of a circle. And that symbol, when it's used in a tolerance block of a feature control frame, it means that the tolerance applies at the feature's maximum material condition. Okay. Now, we use that same symbol, but we also use that in the datum reference block of a feature control frame. And there, it means something very similar, but a little bit different interpretation. It means that the tolerance applies when the when the datum is at its maximum material boundary condition. Okay, so maximum material boundary. Um, and then when no symbol is used in the datum feature uh, reference block, datum reference block, when no, when no symbol is used, um, that indicates that the tolerance applies regardless of material boundary. That's comparable to RFS. And, and again, that's comparable to our rule number two that says, um, hey, regardless of feature size applies unless otherwise specified. So the default is this regardless of material boundary. That's in accordance with rule two of GD and T. So, so let's take a look at some, some things. So, so how many datum features are required for a datum feature reference frame? Okay, when we talked about planes, Okay, when we talked about planes, we needed three mutually perpendicular planes to establish a datum reference frame. But what if, in this case, one of our features, datum features is a feature, is a feature of size? Okay, so on the previous examples we talked about, the datum features were all surfaces. And therefore, we needed three surface datum features um, were required to establish a datum reference frame. Now, if one of those datums is a feature of size, the reference frame can be established with only two datum features. Let's talk about how that's done here. Okay, so in which case, we got this cylindrical part. It's got a plug that sticks up in it. And then this surface from which the plug sticks out of will be identified as datum A. And then the plug here it will be identified as datum B. So what is our datum reference frame. Okay, so the axis that goes through datum B, that's our, that's, um, that, that comes right like through here. Okay, so, so in which case we're using this as B and A. Okay, so our primary datum is axis B. It comes like right up through the middle here. Okay, and that establishes these two um, mutually perpendicular planes. And then we have datum A, which is our secondary, and, and really what happens here, that gives us our complete definition of, of our datum reference feature using just two datums, in which case this um, cylindrical datum, B, establishes an axis up here. That axis essentially, the Z axis coming up through, essentially establishes our X and Y planes coming through there. And that gives us our mutually perpendicular plane, datum A, which gives us a complete datum reference with only two datums. Okay, so, so let's talk about how many datum features are required for tolerance. Okay, um, form tolerances require no datum references. We talked about that in the last chapter. It was like form tolerances don't have any datum references, but an orientation tolerance needs just one datum reference. So in this case, we have in perpendicularity, which is an orientation tolerance, um, of this feature and back to datum A, in which case this orientation tolerance only required one datum reference. But in this other case where we're looking at these tool, the position of these holes that come around the center plug, <clears throat> we have two datum references required. One for the plane of datum A and the other one for <clears throat> the feature size, datum B. 
I'm going to pause for a second. Right, so, so for this positional tolerance, um, we needed two datum references. Okay, for, for this feature, feature control frame here, we needed two datum references. Um, but that, that was one where we have this um, datum reference frame that has, you know, one feature size and one plane. But if we used um, three datum references required, if we used three um, planes to establish our, our, um, our datum reference frame. Okay, here's another one. Um, how many datum features are required for a datum reference frame? So in this case, we got one surface as the primary datum right here, and then two features of size establish a datum reference frame. Okay, so essentially we have a hole here. Okay, and then we would simulate that hole with a pin. See, he's got a pin here at, at the virtual condition. We've got a hole coming up through there. Um, and then we have another block back in here that picks up C at um, um, okay so that's what we're doing here is we're actually establishing you know a datum plane A and then we're establishing this datum axis B okay and then you know, when you think about degrees of freedom if we didn't have this datum C over here locating we could still rotate about this axis here we could still rotate our part about the axis here. So so our part wouldn't be fully constrained until we put datum C in here that stops the rotation of the planes about axis going through B. Okay, so that's how we would simulate this reference frame. Okay, so in this case we have a, a datum reference frame set up by one plane and then two features of size establish that uh, reference frame. So let's explore this one a little bit more. Um, yeah, one surface and two features of size may be referenced as datum features. Primary and secondary features constrain five degrees of freedom. Okay, and then this one, we still have rotation about this point um, here, in which case we would need our tertiary datum over here to block that rotation about axis B. Okay, um, so let's talk about datum references using a MMB modifier. Okay, okay. So in which case here we've got this datum frame reference frame where we have a single axis here in the middle, and then we have a plane um, datum A. So datum plane A sets up our reference frame like this, and then datum axis B sets up our perpendicular planes passing through datum B. So our reference frame is set up using these two datums. Um, in this particular case, I am referencing um, this location of these holes um, to a maximum material condition, but I'm using B, I'm using the modifier, maximum material boundary here in in for B. So what does that mean to me? Okay, so what that means to me when I'm simulating this, what I'll do is I'll have a fixed diameter pin simulating datum B. And that fixed diameter is going to be sized to the virtual condition. The virtual condition of B is the maximum material condition here, which is 990 thousandths. That's 1 inch plus or minus 10, 990 thousandths. And then we have a perpendicularity tolerance of, of 2 that's with that. So that takes my pin down the diameter down to 988. That's the virtual condition of that axis for, for datum B. So the fixed diameter simulator sized at the MMB and then the primary datum surface makes contact with three points on this surface. So we have completely simulated that datum reference frame using this. Now what would happen if we didn't use the modifier? Okay, so here we're using the modifier. It's an MMB modifier. We're using it for datum B. And then when we do that, we have a, a datum simulator for datum B, which is a pin of a fixed size to the virtual condition. This next slide over here, we're not doing that. We've got this 
without the modifier, therefore consistent with rule 2 of GD&T, um, RMB, regardless of material boundary, is assumed. Okay, so how do we simulate that? Okay, regardless of material boundary, our simulator has to make contact with the ID. It has to pick up this datum B of the part, regardless of feature size, which means that we have to have an expander plug in here to pick that up, regardless of feature size. Again, this becomes infinitely more complex in terms of gauging. Okay, so with this, we just have a fixed diameter with using the modifier, the fixed diameter is made to the virtual condition. With this one, we have to have a special spanning plug to actually get in there and pick up this datum B, regardless of what size that datum B actually is. So again, it's a much different situation. I'm going to end this movie right here. Thank you.